Today in the news, we discuss some AMD numbers and features and Intel's last cry on 14 nanometers. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. The secrets are out and the company finally revealed the RX 6000 series two days ago. During that presentation, we got a few benchmarks for each card, showing us how well they perform 1v1 versus a single Nvidia GPU. Today, the company added a section in their website to compare all three RX 6000 cards to three of the current Nvidia cards. You can check it out in the link down below. Also, during the presentation, they showed us a chart with the performance with small smart access memory and rage mode on. Well, on the website, they also added a chart with benchmarks for smart access memory only. This chart shows us that SAM is actually a lot more beneficial to performance than rage mode. With SAM alone, they got up to 11% better performance, while with SAM and rage mode, they only got up to 13 and only 2% difference for the same game. With SAM on, what's pretty interesting is that the RX 6800, the lowest end of model, actually beats the 3090 sometimes. But that's all raster performance. They didn't really approach the subject of ray tracing performance. Well, they kind of did, but on their website, and it's buried pretty deep. If you go in the RDNA2 section of their website, then scroll down to the hardware accelerated ray tracing section, you see a footnote marker. You go down to the footnotes, and there it is. They benchmarked RDNA2 using Microsoft's procedural geometry sample application. That's a DirectX 12 DXR specific benchmark. The result? 471 FPS. If you compare that to the RTX 3080, for example, the average is at around 630 FPS, and for the RTX 3090, it's around 750. The worst part is they don't even specify which GPU was used for the benchmark. They only say an AMD RDNA 2 based graphics cards. This means that it could be the score of their top of the line RX 6900 XT. This makes the 3080 33% faster in DXR ray tracing, and the 3090 60% faster compared to that RDNA 2 based GPU. Yikes. But that's sort of just pure ray tracing. As is, the denoising performance is also really important when we talk about ray tracing. The raw image output when ray tracing is enabled looks something like this for NVIDIA. Add in their NRD or NVIDIA Real Time Denoiser and the image gets fleshed out. This feature is not a part of DirectX 12, it's an API agnostic NVIDIA Gameworks feature. For all we know, on the AMD side, the Fidelity FX Denoiser could do the same job with fewer rays per pixels, making it better or it could be worse at this point we just don't know this unfortunately means that we might be ways away from ray tracing for all regardless of the gpu used since the games will have to implement either amd's fidelity effects or nvidia's gameworks denoiser in every game or both but we all know that's not going to happen Lastly for AMD, we have their super resolution feature, something similar to DLSS. Unfortunately, AMD has nothing to show for it besides the little icon on their website. At least Scott Herkelman did say that they're working on a super resolution feature to give gamers an option for more performance when using ray tracing. Moving on, let's talk Intel. The company has recently made some slides available to the public for Rocket Lake S, their upcoming 11th gen CPUs. While we thought that it would use Tiger Lake's Willow Cove backport, it seems like they're going for an Ice Lake backport instead with what they call the Cypress Cove cores. The slides confirm that Rocket Lake will have a max of 8 cores and 16 threads and feature Intel's latest XE graphics. What caught my attention though is the reported IPC increase. We don't have an exact number but Intel says that it's double digits, which means 10% minimum. At a 10% IPC uplift, if Intel is able to keep the same 5 GHz plus clock speeds, they would be slightly behind AMD in single core performance. If we take the 5950X's leaked Passmark, Cinebench, and CPU-Z scores, and then we take Intel's 10900K scores and add 10%, Intel is about 5-10% to under AMD. Now, I'm not saying that you should wait for Intel's products before upgrading. I mean, AMD has a really good lineup and good upcoming features that favor it with an AMD GPU, but it shows that Intel is not quite out of the game on the now lower end-ish CPU market, like eight core and under. Let's just hope that they can price their stuff right this time. 
And that's pretty much it for the catch-up, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.